In this video, we are going to be doing an analysis of one of the cornerstones of the Inner Spheres heavy mech lineups from the time of the Star League to far beyond. A common sight, but one which embodies much of what it means to be truly a heavy mech, this design would be prominent in all of the wars that have raged across the Inner Sphere since its arrival. A true bastion of weapons and armor, Today we are going to discuss Earthworks Incorporated's Thunderbolt. A heavy mech weighing in at 65 tons, the Thunderbolt is a known quantity throughout the Inner Sphere, and is renowned for its hard-hitting punching power and ironclad durability. The Thunderbolt's sterling reputation is further enhanced by its availability, as it is one of the premier heavy mechs of its era. It also has a place within all the house militaries and with some numbers. Assembly and distribution of the TDR series began in 2491, with the design being used in assault formations in this era, and had the benefit of being specifically designed for planetary assaults. When first introduced, the TDR was also one of the most armed machines of all time. Even as new models came out with various weapons and armor, the Thunderbolt would never fall out of favor and would receive small upgrades with newer technologies to keep it relevant on the field of battle. The Thunderbolt's production has never ceased from the start, and with time, more companies would subcontract to build yet more of these mobile bastions. If there is a war in the Inner Sphere, the Thunderbolt has taken part in it and its weapons have been fired in it. The primary model of the Thunderbolt in the Succession Wars, most commonly seen, is the TDR-5S. Powered by a Magna 260 standard engine, the Thunderbolt has, for its weight, a respectable top speed of 64 km per hour, or 6 movement points in the tabletop game. This gives it the strategic movement needed to keep up with other formations of mechs in the heavy and medium brackets as well as giving it optimal, for its era and weight, tactical movement. The 5S is also served by its 15 standard heat sinks, giving it the ability to fire its long-range weaponry without overheating or prioritizing its short-range weaponry with minimal heat issues. In terms of offensive capabilities, the Thunderbolt has a devastating array of weapon systems for its era. Firstly, it has the Sunglow Type II Large Laser providing it with medium-range striking power and backing up its Delta Dart long-range missile system with 15 tubes, which launches LRMs even further out. Furthermore, its close-range firepower shines with three diverse optics Type 18 medium lasers, backed up by a Baikal short-range missile twin path, and finally, two Volker 200 machine guns for both in-close fighting and anti-infantry abilities. The Thunderbolt has an impressive way of delivering some meaningful damage at every range bracket in its time. In addition, it strikes particularly hard in close, and largely has the sinking ability to handle this. Only a fool looks at a Thunderbolt and thinks it will be an easy fight. It's in fact more armed than some assault mechs, and even more armored than some as well. When it comes to that armor, for protection, the Thunderbolt has an impressive 13 tons of standard armor, giving it exceptionally solid protection for its weight class and putting it into the category of extremely hardened targets. Overall, the TDR-5S is an underweight juggernaut, a force of steel, lasers, and missiles thundering across the battlefield and warding off anything smaller than itself, crashing into any mech its own weight, and punching above its weight class when needed. Every Succession Wars formation wants a Thunderbolt, and almost every major formation has one, or multiple. It is the foot soldier of the heavy mech class, and one which in a bind can delay or even fight off its heavier assault cousins in the thickest of fighting. The 5S should never be underestimated by any mech in this era. From its time at the start of 2491 all the way through to the latest era, there have been a multitude of variations to the Thunderbolt. The original being a primitive mech, the TDR-1C, 
all the way through to the Succession Wars and beyond. Let's talk about three of these designs. The TDR-5S is a dedicated Davian variant of the Thunderbolt and runs on a very simple principle. That principle is that you will be shot by an AC-20 autocannon. The unit discards all of its weapons and installs a single, enormous autocannon. It would also install an LRM-10 to replace its original LRM-15. Though this unit is not as balanced, and its overall rate of damage is close, but slightly lower than its primary variant, all the damage is focused into one location, meaning it can shred through the outer plating of any mech, or even potentially remove the head from a mech that simply wanders too close. The 5D has merits, including that it runs extremely cool, though this variant is not perfect by any means with limited ammunition and combat options. All the same, it's a bulldozer to anything that comes into contact with it when it does. In 3049, with the benefit of the Hell Memory Core, Earthworks Incorporated, the original manufacturer of the Thunderbolt, would assemble an upgrade for their TDR lineup, particularly for House Merit, their benefactors. The TDR-7M is what emerged from this process. Rearmored with ferro fibers, allowing the armor's weight to decline in order to save weight but offer the same protection, this mech would use its saved weight to add to the design. Namely, it would install an ER large laser instead of a large laser. It would upgrade the SRM-2 to an SRM-2 streak and would maintain its medium lasers and machine guns. A case would be added to save the unit from ammunition explosions, but most importantly, it would upgrade the heat sinks on board to double heat sinks. Overall, this design wasn't an immense change for the TDR series compared to its main progenitor, the 5S, but it is a broad improvement, particularly in the realm of heat management and durability. This would be a common model on the front lines, exported to House Steiner and House Karita, and doing battle with its clan counterparts in the clan invasion, where its bulk would be put to the test against the high damage clan machines. Inevitably, their advances would be slowed by the bravery of Thunderbolt pilots from this area, piloting the 7M and other peer variants of this battle mech in this era. The final variant we will be discussing today is the TDR-10S, one of the Dark Age successors to the original design. It possesses an ER large laser as well as an ER PPC, which are used in unison to make long-range pot shots at targets. It comes with 14 double heat sinks, allowing it to fire both weapons frequently as well. To save weight, it does use an inner sphere light fusion engine as well as endo steel. In addition, for long-range and indirect fires, it still has its LRM-15, and for short-range engagements, it has three ER medium lasers. Finally, it has a case in order to try to keep the unit alive. This upgrade may lose out on some smaller features, such as its SRMs and machine guns, but overall it is a brutal brawler for its era. Well armored and well armed, it served the units that it fought alongside with well. Mechs from this era are often sophisticated, but lack numbers in many respects due to broad demilitarization that happened earlier. The tdr 10 triumphant return to the battlefield, along with several of its cousin variants, displayed an end to the era of peace for many planets. The Thunderbolt has served in the front lines of the Inner Sphere really since the beginning of battle mech technology. From the primitive 1C variant through to multiple Dark Age variants and clan refits. In every stage of warfare, its face has lingered on every battlefield. The pilots of this war machine have looked upon developed worlds mining stations on desolate moons, empty fields on rural planets, and have stared into skies filled with strange stars. The Thunderbolt and its pilots have done this from the Reunification Wars, to the Ameris Civil War, to the Succession Wars, to the Clan Invasion, and beyond. Because they are reliable war machines which grind down their enemies and smash through their lines. Whether it is defending worlds such as this, raiding them, or conquering them, 
they stride into battle as an ancient weapon always given new purpose. To some, it may be a savior, to others, an occupier or conqueror. But what it always will be is a battle mech that will leave its adversaries thunderstruck. Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this content, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. There's also a YouTube member program to support this channel, and I appreciate the support from members immensely. With that, I will catch all of you in the comment section below.